Hello, my name is Brian Lewis and I'm an instructor at JTNS in the Public Works section. And today we're going to talk about avoiding slips, trips, and falls. However, before we get started, we would like to take an opportunity, have you pause the video and talk about any kind of accidents or near misses you may have had. Hopefully you've not had any accidents where someone is severely hurt. However, it's important that we talk about these things and that we correct them. So go ahead and pause the video. When you're finished talking, press play and we'll begin our presentation. Hopefully you've had a productive discussion. Now we're going to talk about avoiding slips, trips and falls. So when we uh, begin this topic, we're going to talk about some of the conditions that causes slips, trips, and falls. We're going to talk about things we can do to avoid them and make ourselves safer. But before we do that, we are going to talk about some statistics. So it's important that we realize how serious uh, this is when we talk about the facts associated with slips, trips, and falls. If you notice, in 2018, 27% of over 900,000 non-fatal injuries were due to slips, trips, and falls. And this is not unusual. Year after year, either just a little bit below or a little bit above of 25% or one quarter of all non-fatal injuries are due to slips, trips, and falls. And as safety people, and we'd like to see that number go down as much as we can, uh, because there are more serious injuries than we uh, care to think about that uh, occurred due to slips, trips, and falls. 16% were on the same level. In other words, they were walking on the ground and uh, they slipped or they tripped over something, they fell down, and they got injured enough that uh, it was a reportable injury. 5% uh, were falls from uh, two stories or more. Uh, so we're talking about falls of uh, 12, uh, 24 feet down to a lower level. Uh, and that is going to cause some serious problems and there's potential there for some serious injuries. Uh, so we want to avoid that if we can. So what causes slips, trips, and falls? What conditions do we need to avoid when we're dealing with these uh, hazards? What we want to do is have good housekeeping, clean up spills, clean up trash, clean up product, clean up our tools, our supplies, all these things should have a place and they should be put in their place. Hopefully we do that and hopefully everything uh, is, is in its place and we have a clear path that we can walk through uh, without having to worry about falling down and getting hurt. Wet floors, sometimes these are hard to avoid, sometimes it rains, we have leaks, there are things we can do to uh, bring our attention to that. Sometimes we walk in side from outside, our shoes are wet, need to wipe them off on a rug, that sort of thing. We need to be aware of the weather conditions and other the environment around us. Hydraulic oil, motor oil, anything uh, that lubricates our machines, our tools, that, uh, that we use in our activities and in our work. Eventually, most machines leak uh, and eventually uh, most fittings leak at some point. They need to be replaced. Uh, but however, what we need to do before those things get replaced uh, in maintenance like they should be, we want to make sure that we uh, clean this up and we can use different things to do that. So. Clean up spills, put trash in the trash can, put our products, our tools, our materials where they go. If you've got a water leak, go ahead and put a bucket underneath that water leak. Uh, put caution signs up, mop up any wet floor that you can. Use pigs or some other type of absorbent to collect any kind of oil, whether it be hydraulic, motor oil, or some other lubricant. Caution signs help here also. Bring people's attention 
to the condition that is there. We want to do that. We want to make sure that uh, we take care of our environment because that environment can produce hazardous conditions. We remove the hazardous conditions. We label the hazardous conditions. We can go a long way to avoiding somebody slipping and falling down and hurt themselves. Um, a lot of times people slip and fall backwards. First thing that hits the floor, the back of their head can result in some serious concussion. And um, uh, most of the time it's not too serious, but it very well can be. What causes trips? Well, here's a uh, sort of a little bit of a holdover from our previous talking of slips. Housekeeping. Now we're not talking about water. What we're talking about is trash, materials, tools, things that we can trip over. Some other things that can cause trips are uneven ground, broken concrete. Um, sometimes, especially in utility work, you're walk walking around in high grass and you can't see uh, the uneven ground that's below your feet. So, you know, we need good shoes with good ankle support. Uh, we need to pay attention to where we're walking. So that uneven terrain, that broken concrete, this surface that we're working on can cause us problems when we walk across it and we end up tripping on whatever's there. So what can we do about some of that stuff? Well, you can pick up after yourself not only pick up after yourself, but the people you work with, you can hold them responsible. They hold you responsible. This is good safety and health when we hold each other responsible, hold each other to a standard. Let people know about tripping hazards that need to be fixed. There again, good communication is always important in safety and health. Taking an active part, using active talking methods where you're very specific, very clear and concise about what hazards you are encountering. And then of course, active listening where you pay attention to what someone is saying. And instead of trying to think of a uh, response, just pay attention, pay attention to what's being said and then work together to clear up any kind of gray areas and work together to correct the problem. There can be temporary fixes and uh, there can be permanent fixes. So sometimes you will need to correct the issue in a temporary manner uh, with signs or rerouting uh, walking traffic until uh, maybe the floor can be fixed. So there are ways that you can fix things uh, in a permanent way as well as a semi-permanent way. Pay attention to uneven ground when you're out in the field. Good boots, good ankle support, all this stuff is important. Don't forget it's important to pay attention to what you're doing and how you're doing it. What causes falls? Well, unfortunately, what we're talking about here is uh, tripping from heights. Tripping from heights. Now, you can have uh, unsecured tools, unsecured product, uh, from a higher level, just like you can on the ground. Uh, you cannot be paying attention to where you're at and, and tripping and falling from even through, under, or over guardrails uh, or handrails. So it's important that we pay attention to those things. Those handrails, those guardrails, they're there as a guide. They're there as a guide. So keep that in mind. Another uh, potential hazard is unsecured ladders. Uh, a lot of us like to take an extension ladder, set it against the landing where we're going to go, and then just go right on up that ladder. Uh, do what we need to do and come down. But ladder safety is very important. First of all, before you use any ladder, it's an OSHA requirement that you inspect the ladder. Look at the rungs, look at the rails, Look at the feet, make sure it's all in good working order, make sure that it's uh, not splintered, that there are no cracks, nothing hidden. You want to do a good visual inspection. After you do a good visual inspection, make sure it's appropriate for the condition. You don't want to use aluminum ladders around electricity. 
uh, water, that sort of thing. You want to use wooden or fiberglass ladders. So make sure you, one, inspect the ladder, make sure it is uh, maintained correctly and it's in good condition. Two, make sure you have the appropriate ladder for what you're doing and the condition you're using it in. After that, make sure you use the ladder appropriately, which is number three. Three points of contact. If you have to take tools with you, that's what a tool belt's for. So keep all that in mind. Three points of contact. Make sure that the ladder is appropriate for the condition that you're using it for. And make sure you inspect the ladder that it's in good condition. The last part of this is to secure the ladder. And there are several ways to do that. We'll talk about that in the next slide. Some other parts that causes falls are fall protection not being used. There are several types of fall protection and we'll talk about that more uh, in another slide as we go through uh, our presentation. So housekeeping is more important when it's above the another surface. So one, it can cause you to fall and hurt yourself uh, in a more severe way on the surface below. So anytime you're falling from height, the potential for a greater injury is there. Not only that, if there are people working below you, which there shouldn't be, but if there are, then you can fall on to another person. You yourself can be hurt, they can be hurt. Uh, you can also knock tools off from height and have them fall onto another person. That's why we have tow boards and things like that to keep that from happening. So injuries are more severe, there are people below, and we want to make sure that we do the right thing and take the right precautions when we're working from height. So keep that in mind. So we want to secure ladders, and there's at least three ways we can secure them, all right? So we can secure them at the bottom simply by another person holding the ladder and making sure the feet of the ladder do not slip out from under uh, the person that's on the ladder. Make sure it's at a 75 degree angle. Make sure the person secures the ladder. You can also secure uh, the bottom by attaching a rung or the rail uh, to something that will keep it from slipping out from under you. However, if you're gonna do this, you wanna avoid any kind of hazards that can result in puncture or impaling hazards. You don't wanna fall off a ladder and fall onto a spike or something else and receive a puncture wound or be impelled by something. We want to avoid that. Uh, one way that a lot of people do it is they have someone hold the ladder, secure it from the bottom, and then when they reach the landing or the surface they're going to rem remove themselves from the ladder and stand on, they secure by that rung at the top. So that's another possible way that you can secure the ladder from the top as well as the bottom, but you do need to have it secured uh, until you get there. So that's important to remember that. How to avoid falls? You must have fall protection. And the numbers that we need to remember are four, six, and 10 feet. Why are those numbers important? It's important because in general industry, Anytime you are more than four feet above another level, you need to have fall protection. In construction, the number is six feet. Anytime you are working six feet above another level, you need fall protection. Additionally, if you're on top of scaffolding, you need to have fall protection when you are 10 feet above the surface or more. So four, six, and 10. It's also important to realize that this, uh, what we're talking about, general industry construction, that has more to do with the type of work you are doing. Whether you are doing uh, maintenance or you're installing something new can have a really big impact, can have a really big impact on whether you're doing a general industry activity or a construction activity. So it's important to keep those things in mind. It absolutely is. So fall protection, what can we use for fall protection? Well, one of the first thing everybody thinks of is guardrails. And for sure, guardrails 
uh, can be used and are great fall protection. You need a top rail and a mid rail, and they need to be able to support 200 pounds in any direction. So whatever materials you're going to use for guardrails, uh, they need to be smooth. Uh, the ends need to be such that someone can't get hurt from walking into the ends of the guardrails. Uh, so nothing can be protruding off of them. If you use wood like two by fours, you need to make sure that they're splinter free. So guardrails, anywhere from 39 inches above the walking surface to 42 inches is appropriate. And a mid rail, roughly halfway in between. That's what you want for a guardrail. And remember, it must support 200 pounds in any direction. So sometimes guardrails just aren't possible. They just aren't. And sometimes what we have to do is come up with a harness and a lanyard. So don't really use belts anymore. Uh, people get hurt from those when they fall, have severe back injuries. So when you use a harness and a lanyard, you want to inspect that harness, you want to inspect that lanyard, make sure it's in, in good shape, that it's uh, according to the manufacturer, you want to inspect the webbing, make sure that it's adequate, you want to inspect all the metal, make sure it is adequate, make sure it's in good shape, make sure that it will, or it is rated to support you or whoever, make sure that, um, that also when you're using a harness and lanyard that the uh, attachment point make sure that in a, it is an approved attachment point that it will support you uh, that needs needs a, a rating that will support you or the other person that's going to use it make sure you're trained on how to use a harness and lanyard and also if you're going to use a harness and lanyard make sure you understand that someone cannot dangle in a harness for a prolonged period of time. What happens is circulation gets cut off and then when someone uh, relieves or that stress is relieved from the harness, what happens is you have a lot of toxins that run through the body at that point and that can result um, in some severe disabling injuries and even death and even death. So we want to be careful with that. Positioning devices, they are harnesses, belts, things like that, that, that have a length associated with them that will not let a person reach the edge. Therefore, you cannot fall because you can't reach the edge. That's important. I want to appreciate uh, you for paying attention. Uh, I hope it's been informative and I hope you pay attention to the hazards that we have to deal with. Thank you.